Hi, this is Dr. A with your Intro to U.S. Healthcare lesson. We are on Chapter 8 and looking at careers in the health industry. We are going to look at the allied health professions, and we are in the fifth edition of the basics of the U.S. healthcare system. All right, so let's talk allied health professionals. So there are four main categories of allied health professionals. You have uh, the people involved in diagnostics. So these are your laboratory technologists and technicians, your medical imaging technologists, like radio, radiology, sonography, etc. Uh, we also have our therapeutic science practitioners, so we think of OT, PT, speech pathology, respiratory therapist, radiation therapist, and then you have your behavioral scientists, social work, fitness trainers, mental health therapists, and then we have all of our support services, EMPs, paramedics, medical assistants, we have surgery techs in there, health navigators, uh, medical managers, or office managers, so many things here. Uh, in these provide support in physicians uh, to physicians and nurses. Um, and so, again, this is 60% of the healthcare workforce. So if you want to work in healthcare, but you do not want to be a doctor or a nurse, you might find a career in these um, slides here. So uh, the term allied health professionals was coined as a result of the passage of the Allied Health Professions Personal Training Act of 1967. Uh, and allied health professionals provide both direct and indirect patient care. For example, uh, allied health professionals like myself that uh, work in the lab, I was, um, well, I am a medical laboratory scientist. Uh, we did a lot of indirect patient care because we are behind the scenes running all the labs and all the testing so that the physicians and the nurses can properly take care of their patients. Uh, so we have very little direct patient contact, uh, but um, an allied health professional like my husband, that's a respiratory therapist, has a lot of direct patient contact. There are 5 million allied health professionals in the United States who work in uh, 80 different professions and represent nearly 60% of the healthcare workforce. The Commission on Accreditation of Allied Health Education Programs accredits U.S. education programs that offer 32 allied health specialties. So I'm going to start with the diagnostics, and if some of you are following in the textbooks, I've added some of these because I still feel like this chapter in the textbook does not have enough information on these allied health professions. So we're going to start with your medical lab technicians and medical lab scientists. I am a medical lab scientist. Um, these uh, professionals test blood and body fluids to give physicians objective answers and to help diagnose disease. There are different degrees. There's the MLT which is an AAS, an associate in clinical lab sciences. Um, there is a, the MLS, which is um, the bachelor's of science in clinical lab sciences. You can also get a master's in clinical lab science and a doctoral. Uh, so the DCLS, um, and they do doctoral level consultation on lab tests and problems, test utilization, quality, weird, odd case scenarios, etc. The salary range is anywhere from 48,000 for uh, per year for, for the associate MLT uh, to 74,000 for the MLS, uh, and the DCLS can make $125,000 and up. Next, we have our friends in medical imaging. So they help uh, in the diagnostic process by providing imaging to physicians and also do radiation therapy. Uh, there is um, AS is in radiological sciences, which just do basic radiology where you can just you do basic you know, x-rays and stuff. But um, most uh, allied health professionals in, uh, that are going to do medical imaging are going to go for the bachelors in radiological sciences. Um, and there are many different like pathways they can take then within there. So they will all learn your basic uh, radiography sciences. So they all learn how to do x-rays and how all the basics work. And then they can subspecialize, so they can go into cardiovascular interventional technologies, work in CT labs. Um, they can do diagnostic medical sonography, can do ultrasounds. They can do MRI and CT, and uh, so do a lot of those imaging for um, you know hospitals, for emergency rooms, and etc. They can go into mammography or breast sonography, so in women's health there, and they can also do radiation therapy, and they're going to have their own slide. Uh, but a lot of radiation therapy programs are embedded within the medical imaging 
programs or the radiological sciences program, their salary range is anywhere between $50,000 and $73,000. Your anesthesiologist assistant, uh, a certified anesthesiologist assistant is a physician assistant level specialty. So they're a specialized physician assistant. Uh, so again, that's a master's level training. They work under the direction of an anesthesiologist. Um, the anesthesiologist assistant is a member of the anesthesia care team for surgical procedures. Um, the specialty PA assists with implementing an anesthesia care plan. The program is 24 to 27 months. And as of 2021, the median salary was $160,000. So physical therapists, um, they help the injured or ill people improve movement and manage pain. They are often an important part of preventive care, rehabilitation, and the treatment for patients with chronic conditions, illnesses, or injuries. Um, there are a couple of degrees. So you have the PTA, so um, the, um, the physical therapy assistant. Uh, they have an associate's in physical therapy. So that's a shorter course of studies, so only two years, right? And then there's a DPT, which is a Doctor of Physical Therapy, uh, for which you have to have an undergrad, a bachelor's already, and uh, something else. Some people do exercise science, uh, kinesiology, others might do just some of the, the health sciences or the harder sciences like the biology stuff, and um, they and then come and apply to a DPT program. The 2021 median annual salary for DPT was 95000 and the PTA is about 55000 Occupational therapy uh, helps people of all ages who have physical, sensory, or cognitive problems. OTs can help them regain independence in all areas of their lives. So that's really the primary goal of OT, is uh, helping people live a full life um, despite their limiting challenges. Um, uh, there are a couple of degrees. We have an associate uh, in occupational therapy and uh, so to be an occupational therapy assistant, an OTA, and then we have a doctorate of occupational therapy to be an OTD. Again, uh, in our college, the, um, they first have to go complete a bachelor's in health sciences, uh, and then they can apply to the doctorate of occupational therapy. The salary range is about 60,000 for OT OTAs and 80,000 for OTDs. Speech language pathology. Um, so, uh, speech language pathologists work with people of all ages, from babies to adults, to treat many types of communication and swallowing problems. Um, there are degrees we have a, a bachelor's of science in communication disorder and a master's of science in communication disorders. And the salary range is seventy-one thousand to one hundred thousand dollars for speech language pathologist uh, at the 100,000 is at the master's level, of course. Uh, next, we have radiation therapists. So again, these are part of the medical imaging. So I know most of medical imaging is diagnostic, and then we have these old guys here that do therapy. So uh, they are part of the medical radiation oncology team. Uh, radiation therapists use machines called linear accelerators to administer radiation treatment to patients. Radiation therapists work in hospitals or in cancer treatment centers. Um, they have a bachelor's degree. Uh, there are also an associate's degree or a certificate in radiation, certificate, sorry, in radiation therapy that is required. Individuals also may become qualified by completing an associate or a bachelor's degree program in radiography, and which is the study of you know, radiological imaging and then completing a 12-month certificate program in radiation therapy. Many states require radiation um, therapists to be licensed and most employers require certification. The 2021 median salary was $83,000. Respiratory therapists, they help people who are having trouble breathing. Uh, they help manage patients that are on ventilators. We do a lot of breathing treatments. Um, there are a couple of degrees. Um, there's an AAS, respiratory therapy, which most of uh, people finishing with that degree will be become a uh, certified respiratory therapist. Uh, you can also do a bachelor's in respiratory therapy and become an RRT. Or if you are really smart, you can do an AAS in respiratory therapy and pass the exam at the RRT level and be an RRT. 
The salary range is 50 to 65,000 65, for CRT and 67 to 90,000 for RRT. So uh, social work, they uh, help individuals, groups, and families prevent and cope with problems in their everyday lives. Um, there are a couple of degrees here. We have a Bachelor of Social Work and a Master's of Social Work. The salary ranges are forty nine to fifty nine thousand for the bachelor's of social work and fifty five to eighty thousand for the master's of social work. Mental health counseling. Mental health counselors advise individuals, families, couples, and groups. Mental health counselors treat clients who have a, a variety of conditions including anxiety, depression, grief, and stress. Their degrees are usually a graduate certificate in mental health counseling. Um, and their salary range is forty-seven to eighty-four thousand dollars. And then we have our EMTs and paramedics. So people who are ill have, or have had an accident or have been wounded often depend on the competent care of emergency medical technicians and paramedics to get them help, get them stabilized, and then get them to the hospital. Uh, these are patients that all require immediate medical attention. And these EMTs and paramedics provide this vital service as they care for and transport these patients or these injured patients to a medical facility for appropriate medical care. EMT paramedics require 200 to 400 hours of training. The EMT 2021 median salary was uh, 37000 and that's for the basic EMT. Paramedics make more, uh, but I still feel like they're underpaid, underpaid for what they do. Next, we have our medical assistants. Uh, they are supervised by physicians. The medical assistants uh, must have the ability to multitask. So more than 60% of medical assistants will work in medical offices and clinics. Um, they perform both administrative and clinical duties. Um, they may be trained to perform some basic lab tests or uh, you know, do some basic vital signs and different things like that. So, so whatever they do in the clinical world, it's not gonna be really advanced, uh, but they, they, again, there are laborers that can help. Um, the physicians will employ medical assistants more than any other allied health assistant. Um, they have uh, either an associate degree or a, a diploma top program. Um, and the 2021 median salary was 37,000 again. So that's still lower on the rung of the salaries. We also have medical and health services managers. Uh, so these are, we call them office managers really, um, they, but they can be found at all levels of the healthcare organization. So they can manage hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, community health centers, and other healthcare facilities. Your mid-level administrators also play a leadership role in different departments. They're responsible for managing the areas of responsibility. They may manage departments or individual programs. Um, their undergraduate, undergraduate degree um, for entry-level positions um, so it can be in health sciences. So we have a health sciences program, which, you know, uh, helps feed um, into this type of job. Uh, but some of them may try to get a business degree also. Um, and you can get a master's degree also for management positions. Um, and some people may go and get their MBAs for that. Um, but you also have to understand that within the hospital and the clinical world, a lot of people that become department managers, especially of a clinical area, usually come from that profession. Um, and then they learn how to do the management stuff on top of their regular clinical training. But there are people also that are really valuable, uh, especially in, in, you know, to manage clinics and stuff that really uh, understand the billing and insurance and all these intricacies of managing an office uh, in a medical practice. The 2021 median salary is $101,000, which varies greatly depending on the organization. We also have occupational health and safety specialists and technicians. Um, this is one of the latest programs we've added to our uh, college. So occupational health and safety specialists and technicians, they collect data uh, on and analyze many types of work environments and work procedures. Um, they, um, the specialists will inspect workplaces for adherence to regulation on safety, health, and the environment. They can collaborate with specialists in conducting tests and measuring hazards to help prevent harm to workers, property, to the environment, and to the general public. 
the uh, 2021 median annual salary for specialists was $77,000 and for technicians was about $55,000. Um, and so these people may, may work in hospitals, but they may also work, uh, a lot of them will work in industry um, and be hired to um, manage you know, OSHA compliance, but also health and safety of the thousands of employees that are employed in you know, manufacturing and factories and things like that. So in conclusion, uh, the healthcare personnel, personnel sorry, represents one of the largest labor forces in the United States. This chapter provided an overview of the different types of professions in the healthcare industry. Some require many years of education. Others can be achieved through one or two year programs. More than 20,000, I'm sorry, more than 200 occupations and professions are represented by the millions of healthcare workers. So there are many opportunities. Again, if you're considering healthcare, you're not sure what you want to do, you don't want to be a physician, you don't want to be a nurse, there's so many options for you in allied health. So I hope you find your path. And this concludes our chapter eight on careers in the healthcare.